I once again woke up rather early. After a week of being on vacation and traveling through many states, I felt that I had been on a very rewarding trip, but was ready to go back home. The Airbnb instructions were to put the dirty sheets in a trash bag and leave them out front. I didn't do anything dirty on the sheets, and rather regretted it since, even though I feel I should be paid more, my job's salary likely would have made me appear a very high-value man in the fourth poorest state in the country. I wasn't anybody in the area's cousin, though, which would have worked against me. It didn't take very long for me to pack my things and start my journey back. I did enjoy my time at the cabin and gave a silent farewell to the residents and woods that had treated me so well for three nights. With that, I was ready to take off. It would be a 14 and a half hour drive to try to make it back in one trip, and I didn't know if I would be able to do that. However, I couldn't properly gauge just how much I would be able to do, so I decided to play it by ear and just drive until I felt I needed a rest, and so I hit the road and took off towards home. I forgot I had left beer in the Airbnb fridge and recalled reading that I would receive a fine if I left anything in the room, so I had to quickly turn back to the cab. It was great to see my old friend again. After grabbing the beer, I said a silent farewell to the residents and woods that had treated me so well. And took off. Before getting onto the major highways that I would be staying on for hours, I had to stop to appreciate the beauty of the mountain state in the morning. The sight was serene and one I will remember for a while. It was time to commit to the road. I sang along to the radio to help the drive go by faster. Why can't you feel it? He doesn't care if he breaks your heart. And the hours zipped by and soon enough I found myself in Chicago traffic. I honestly have not heard a single nice thing about Chicago and immediately regretted going this way. But I made it through and found myself in Milwaukee. It seemed like one of the few opportune times to visit my alma mater, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, so I did. The outside looked the same, and I was preparing for a bittersweet nostalgia rush when I revisited the halls that I had spent a tremendous amount of time in back in the day. I thought memories would come rushing back about the many people I interacted with, but as I thought about it, the empty halls felt no different than when I stood in the crowded halls. It was weird feeling that the halls felt as empty when I stood in them packed together with the other students many years ago, as they do walking them with no one around today. I 
I left with a somewhat somber feeling, and I wasn't sure why. I didn't have another five-hour drive left in me and decided that I would spend the night in Madison. As I pulled into my hotel, the somber feeling persisted and I continued to think back on the trip. As I walked to my hotel room, an interesting realization came to me. What all my experiences on the trip had in common was that I had done them alone. An Adam without an Eve, a Noah's Ark Bordy without his pair, a Lewis without a Clark, a traveler with no one else to share the experience with. And it took me all the way back to where this trip started. The whole point of the trip was to take a break from work but what I do for work is produce, shoot, and edit video. And that's exactly what I had done this whole trip. As I sat down on the hotel bed, thoughts continued to persist. Perhaps the reason I had filmed everything was because it served as a distraction from the fact that I was doing everything alone. But if producing, shooting, and editing video was a distraction from that on the trip, who's to say that it's not the same distraction in my everyday life? And as I prepared to go to rest for the last time on this trip, a sobering thought occurred to me. I don't doubt that there are those who can honestly enjoy alone time, but then there are those who can't. There are those for whom alone time doesn't even exist. Because to just exist with themselves with no distractions isn't to be alone. It's to spend time with the person who hates them the most. 